Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hess. I'm here with Julie Pride. She's the administrator of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. This week, the CDC came out and said, if you have been vaccinated, you can congregate in small groups outside without masks. How comfortable are you with that recommendation? I am comfortable with it. Um, you know, it's people that are vaccinated can do things a lot safer. And, you know, we're seeing that. We're seeing people go out, have dinner together with friends that are all, everyone's vaccinated and it's, it's working out great. We, we are seeing a drastic decrease in the number of cases on campus because so many kids are vaccinated. And we have certainly seen, you know, a decrease in cases, hospitalizations, and deaths once we started vaccinating uh, people over 65. So um, everyone needs to get vaccinated, though. It's not just those groups. We are going to get to those numbers in a second. I want to know if I should be encouraged or discouraged that surrounding counties have been rejecting extra orders of the vaccine. Their demand has slowed down. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Now, it's really a neither thing. It's actually just to be expected. So what happens you know, when you're doing a mass vaccination campaign or something like this is you have the huge push at the beginning. So your strategies change from the very beginning you know, till the end of it. But at the very beginning, you know, everybody wants it. Everybody who wants it really wants it and they're gonna go after it. So you have to you know, do the mass vaccination clinics and you have to have appointments and you have to do things to limit crowding. This is the normal part of this is now we get to the people you know, I keep saying the low hanging fruit, those are done. So now you have to get to people who um, either still want the vaccine, but just haven't gotten around to get it, getting it because it hasn't been convenient, or there are people who are still thinking about it, but they're leading that way. You know, the, the hard no's, the really hard no's on this are going to be probably a relatively small group, just like they are with all vaccinations. Um, because ultimately, I think people as they keep seeing the long, you know, long hauler syndrome, um, they start seeing people dying in their age category. Um, they might start rethinking this. And, and I think we're seeing that. So, you know, this is what we certainly what we expected. So now we're opening up for walking clinics and, and not having to worry so much about the appointments. We're doing lots and lots of neighborhood based clinics, um, church based clinics, school based clinics. So we're just trying to get it out to where it's more convenient for people to get. We'll probably be doing some you know, larger events that are happening, we'll probably offer it there as well. And I know that I bother you about this each week, but this morning I read that 12 to 15 is possibly approved this week for the shots. That can only be one step closer to than zero to 12. So we're getting there, right, in, in good time. We're, we're getting there and we do expect 12 and, and older, so Right now it's 16 and older, so 12 to 16, we expect that to be approved and us to be available to start, or having the vaccine available to start doing it this month. That is certainly what we're planning on. So yes, it is going to take longer to get the um, younger ages because those studies you know, are, are just beginning. So, or they're early on, but hopefully you know, by fall, we'll, we'll start seeing some of those results come in. But we do expect to have Pfizer available for 12 and up starting starting this month. A lot of U of I students, and we all know people who have kids there, or we know people who attend there, have already gotten both of their vaccines. Mm -hmm. The cases this week, they did thousands of tests with three positive cases. Yep. Would you say the U of I has handled this tremendously well? Uh, yes. I mean, the U of I, the U of I has been a model for the country. They've just done, no matter how difficult it was, um, they, they did it and the students have been amazing. Certainly the, the leadership at the U of I has been amazing. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing other universities and colleges across the United States replicating what they did because they did it and they did it well. And the students, you know, the students are getting vaccinated and that is making a huge dent in, in the cases. So yes, so we, and you can see right there, the vaccination is working. I mean, they're, they're visible, tangible, um, examples that people can see with their own eyes of, of how this is working. The students and administrators and teachers and professors have needed to get two tests a week in order to get an administration to let them into buildings, basically. This fall, Robert Jones, our chancellor, released a statement that people are no longer going to have to test twice a week as long as they approve of vaccination. Do you think this is a great idea? 
I, I think it's, it is a great idea. I mean, that's the point of getting vaccinated is so that you can start doing things safely. And then they can focus on people who haven't gotten vaccinated and, and worry about, you know, worry about that. And, um, you know, if, but I also know the U of I, it has, they keep in super close contact with us, super close contact with the hospitals. And if anything changes, you know, they'll be able to immediately pivot because that's what they do. It, it does amaze me that as large of an institution as it is, as it is, is that they can really, they're really pretty nimble about how they've dealt with COVID. They're very nimble. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. And then they can, you know, focus on, on other issues. You mentioned hospitalization. So now is a good time for you to give us some numbers for the week. Okay. Uh, right now we have 10 hospitalized. We have 415 active cases in isolation. That's 3.7% positivity rate. And we have 538 um, individuals in quarantine. Currently we have 42.15% of our county fully vaccinated and over 50% have had at least one dose. Um, and 81.46% of persons 65 and older are fully vaccinated. We really need that number to be 100% because everyone at 65 and older is super vulnerable to um, having, you know, hospitalizations, death, or, or other disability caused by that. Um, so we really need to keep seeing the vaccination numbers going up. And I know that it's been an entire year and a weird year, so it's hard to remember. But I remember last May when we thought the numbers would change when the students left. They really didn't because students had done a really good job of keeping the virus contained. As we head into the summer, do you expect to see numbers or anything change now? I, I don't. I mean, um, as, as far as the U of I goes, I mean, they've had very few cases lately, so that's great. Um, I really hope what we see are the numbers continuing to dwindle, you know, get smaller and smaller because more and more people are getting vaccinated. Once we get the 12 and up vaccinated, that's certainly going to help. Um, and, you know, that, that's what we need to see is, is everyone getting vaccinated and then, then the numbers will, will eventually get down to a very, very small number and eventually go away. So that, that would be what we would like to see. We'd like to see herd immunity, but I, we would. I hear fears that there are enough people skeptical of getting the vaccine. What does that mean? If we only ever achieve 70, 75% of people with the vaccine, does that just mean the virus lives on around us all the time? That, that's pretty much what that means. And that people, will, people that are unvaccinated will continue to get sick and some will get hospitalized and some will die. And that will just continue, continue to play out. And what the the more concerning part of that is, is that every time the virus passes from person to person, we risk getting some type of a mutation or a variant that will then be able to evade the vaccination that we have, and then we have to start all over again. And, and no one wants to see that. And I can assure you, no one here wants to see that. If you see this message from you at the beginning of the week, before, of course, the 12 to 16 is approved, Right now, it's still 16 and up in our community. And if anybody 16 and up wants the vaccine, do they call you? Do they still go to the website? What's the best way to do it? So now there's walk-in clinics. So at Public Health, we have a walk-in clinic on Fridays. It's open to anyone. Um, Carl at the Dress Barn location is going to go to walk-ins. You can still get appointments as well if you prefer that. And some people do. We're still able to do that. Um, we're still, Carl and Christy are still going out and vaccinating people who are homebound. All you need to do for that is send me an email or call me with the person's uh, name and birth date and um, where they get their care and somebody will get out there to vaccinate them. We're, so, you know, we're, we're going to keep doing all of that. Uh, Francis Nelson has vaccine. Christy has vaccine. OSF and Rantoul has vaccine. We have outreach clinics going seven days a week in our community. So, keep an eye on our Facebook page. That's a good place to find out where we are, you know, where the, where they're doing vaccines at, at any moment, whether it's neighborhood based or whatever. Last question before I let you go. I had to make an appointment for my son to get a physical for school entering into grades. We're still needing vision exam, dental exams, school physicals, sports physicals. 
CUPHD also does that. You're just not the pandemic specialist. You do all of that. So how does somebody navigate how to do that for their children? Well, yes, we still do that. Um, like I said in, in the uh, Parade of Lights, pandemics are our side hustle. We're continuing to do all of our services. Um, and so wherever your child goes for dental or, or vision or um, primary care, they need to get those done. Um, the, the forms are on our website and you can just call in and we, you know, we'll probably be announcing, ooh, it's May. So, you know, er, early this summer, we'll start announcing um, the vaccine clinics and sports clinics and things that are going on in the community so that people can, can go in there. So, you know, always check, you can get it now for your child. If you, if you have the ability to get in and get it done, you know, do that now. All right, Julie Pride, Administrator of Champaign-Urbana Public Health District and our award-winning producer, Jason Liggett from UPTV. City of Urbana, of course, Diane Marlin, Mayor of Urbana is our constant partner in all of this. We're getting there. I see pictures of people being able to be outside together, just hang in there, mask up, stay distant when you can. Is that the right message, Julie? That's the right message, but also, you know, get vaccinated and, you know, take five, take five people to get vaccinated. You you find five people that you know that haven't gotten vaccinated yet, find out why they haven't gotten vaccinated. Maybe they need a car, maybe they need a ride, maybe they need someone to hold their hand while they're doing it. Maybe they need uh, someone to give them an article or hook them up with a doctor or someone they can talk to about it. You know, find out why they haven't gotten vaccinated and facilitate them getting vaccinated and that will help our entire community. All right, Julie Pride, thank you for everything you do.